first test firing of the nuke launcher in three, two, one. <laughs> this is my mini nuke. I made this a while back, we did a video on it. The response was overwhelmingly positive. In fact, in the comments, the consensus was clear. I need to make the Fat Man, the launcher for the mini nuke. And usually I don't cave to peer pressure, but I do adore Fallout. And building a nuke launching shoulder mounted Fat Man has been on my bucket list for a long time. Uh, really anything from Fallout would be fun. I love it so much. In fact, I know that you probably love it too. And you probably got a favorite prop from Fallout. Uh, in fact, if you can think of a good one, let me know down in the comments. I want some more fun ideas. Uh, but today, we're making the Fat Man. On top of that, we're getting some help from our friends over at Surebonder. They are sponsoring this video. They also sent us a bunch of really fantastic tools and materials for the build. Those are gonna be really handy when we do some foam fabrication later on in the build. The first part of the build, though, is gonna be made from more rigid materials. Things are a little bit more durable so that I can make a mechanism to launch the mini nuke, you heard me right. We're gonna make this thing fly. Let's get started then by looking at the materials we'll need to make our launcher. I've already started doing some shopping. These components here are for the frame of our nuke launcher. And the main component for that is going to be 20 by 20 aluminum extrusion. The first thing I need to do is to take two of these and attach them together. To connect all our parts, I picked up some of these connectors. They have four uh, set screws in them and they get threaded through there. Then when I slide these together like that on either side, I can tighten those and that securely holds these two parts together. I'm gonna have other attachments that will help uh, besides these, but this makes sure they're nice and lined up, which is awesome. I put together two of these rails to make my frame, and then I even went and mocked up everything as a 3D model in Fusion 360. That way I can kind of figure out where a lot of the parts are gonna go. Some of those parts are being 3D printed. In fact, they should be all done. Let's see how they turned out. Okay, where's my part? <laughs> that looks awesome. Oh, there was a handle. Very good, let's get to work. Here's my main part. This is eventually gonna hold the trigger and there's a spot here for the handle, which is going to go in that. That's the handle hole. <laughs> so eventually it'll be like this, but for now, I'm really worried about this part because I'm gonna use this to hold parts of the frame together. In Fusion, the sketch I used to make this part, I was able to export and print so that I could use this as a template to make some additional parts out of aluminum. This is 1 8 inch thick aluminum. I use these to punch all the holes in the correct location. And this will eventually be a sandwich between my rails and the 3D printed part to kind of hold everything together. Uh, I do need to make a couple more of these for the ends of my rails here. So let's go do that. made a pair of these, they're gonna head down to our rails here, and I'm gonna use them to hold them together. To attach them, I'm gonna use these special nuts that I got and uh, M5 screws. They'll screw in there, and then they'll go in the rail to hold it down. To attach them, I'll put a washer through here, put that through my plate, and then get this started, and I can then slide it into place on my rail. And as I tighten that, it'll actually turn this little piece into the proper position. 
Now that's nice and secure on there. This piece is a little different. It's definitely getting screwed down, but this is going to get sandwiched over it. So I can get uh, my screws started by poking them through there and through there, and then I can start the nut on there. With all my nuts on there, I can actually drop them down into the rail. Should be able to anyway, just like that. And like I said, when I tighten them, it should twist those into place. Uh, I'm also not entirely sure where this is supposed to be located, but I can move it. Uh, I can adjust it if I need to. I think I've got this in the right spot. It's nice and tightened down. Uh, let's focus on the top now. This is gonna be the surface for launching our mini nuke downrange. In fact, here's the one we made in uh, a video a while back. And then Brittany made one that's all foam. We'll paint this in a little bit. Uh, but this is gonna be the one that we launched. This one has PVC pipe on the bottom. That might hurt if it hits me in the head. Uh, so this is gonna be our ordinance. It's gonna go down that way. And I cut out another sheet of aluminum to act as a sled. This is what's gonna get pulled down the rail and this will be resting on top of it in some way, launching it that way. My thought is I can use more of these screws only upside down and it'll go in the rail like so, and then that will get screwed into our sled, uh, which means I need to tap these holes. I have an M5 tap all loaded up here and it should just go right through. No problem, aluminum is really safe. I mean, it's basically shiny wood. Uh, our screw should now go in nicely. Look at that. Uh, and then I need to make sure that they are threaded just the right amount so that it can fit in here with a little bit of wiggle room up and down. Uh, to make it slide better, I actually have some of this tape. It's uh, UHMW, it's super slick. I just need to make sure there's enough room between this piece and that piece for my tape. I want it to run along that eventually. Uh, once I got it all looking good, these can get secured using a jam nut. You heard me right. Just by putting another nut on top of it. Oh, it's, it's super simple. There we go. And then as I tighten it, that screw can no longer spin freely and it won't go in or out. So it's, it's set. My plastic tape is gonna go across this way and the rail will go that way. So I'm hoping that only this and this are touching down so there's as little friction as possible. Um, I sanded and cleaned that spot there too so that the adhesive on this will hopefully stick really well. Let's find out. There we go. And uh, I cut it too long and then I'll trim that after uh, it's stuck down. Let's give it a shot. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Uh, before, the metal on metal was very loud and you could tell there was a lot of friction there. Uh, there is a little bit of a lip here and it's hitting that. So I'll probably have to try and sand that down. Uh, but other than that, I think this sled's gonna work great. The sled seems to be well on its way. The next thing to figure out is the propulsion system. And for that, I have Surgical tubing, this is the same stuff you'd use to make a slingshot. It seemed more than appropriate for this project. I drilled and tapped a couple of holes in my sled here so I can attach my rubber band on the bottom using this guy. Whoop. And that's just gonna get screwed right in there. This is another one of those M5 screws and I threw a washer in there, hopefully it'll help it stay closed. Uh, when this is firing, this part's gonna be under an awful lot of stress. Nice and tight, this will go through there and be attached to itself for propulsion. Kind of like this. Whee! That is already very promising. I went ahead and sanded the gap right there and it's a lot smoother now. I could probably use a little more work, but I'll get to that later. So if my surgical tubing is gonna attach under there, it'll run all the way down here. And then what I want is for it to double back on itself so I have a little more rubber to work with, give me some more oomph. So to do that up here, I have an idea. This is a little aluminum tube that I had lying around. It's gonna be the pivot that my rubber band goes around. And I also picked up these things which can attach to these rails in a number of orientations, including the hole on the front of it there. So this can get attached there with my tube in the middle. Uh, to do that though, I need to tap these holes and I think an M6 is gonna be the right size for that. And 
and that'll get screwed in like that. Cool. Okay, so now this tube should fit between them, and then I can run a bolt through there, cap it with a nut. The tubing will go around there. This will go to the sled. The other side will be secured so that I have a lot of stretch to work with. And I think that's gonna work really well. The rubber's gonna go back here and I need to attach it here, but there's gonna be a trigger mechanism coming out of here. So I need a nice low profile solution. And I think this is gonna do it for me. Uh, I thought about just having a, a straight bar, but I don't want this kind of on an edge like that. I want a bigger radius. So this part, I'm gonna bend over to make a nice round part for this to go over. I'm gonna just leave the end of it exposed and bend just that part. And to do that, I'm gonna use a sophisticated method known as smashing it with a hammer. Here's the connection piece I made. This is where our uh, hose is going to go around. That'll get zip tied there. And I'm probably gonna have to zip tie it around there to hold it. Now it could go this way or this way. Uh, if it's this way, it actually blocks this. I can't really put anything in there because my sled needs to go down in there. It'll collide with that. So it has to be oriented that way. I have a trigger mechanism that's gonna come out of here and I may have to just bend that bar around this. I'll just deal with that later. For now, it goes around there. And then before securing it, I wanna stretch it. And then I'll just use my extra set of hands to secure the zip tie. That's nice and secure. So when we pull on this, it's not gonna unravel. That is super secure. The other end's going through this part on our sled, which I have taken off the rails for now. This sled is off the rails, man. That will also get zip tied right there. Here we go. This makes me so nervous. <laughs> it wants to go. All right, I'm gonna break this if I keep playing with it. I need to have, I need some sort of thing to stop the sled as it gets to the end. But I think, like that feels like a lot of force. Okay, I'm gonna cut this short. Great. To keep this from wanting to just fly off the end there, I'm gonna put some stops and I'm gonna use these parts here. Those will get screwed down. Uh, but I want some sort of impact absorption. So I have a piece of black foam here. This is just a high density foam. It's really rigid, but it has a little bit of give. You could probably use rubber or something else, uh, but that's gonna get screwed onto that to be a, a bumper for us. There we go. That'll go on there. Looking good so far. There's enough room on the bottom for our aluminum plate to hit, and that's kind of what I was aiming for there. Beep. Beep. So that'll bump against that. Uh, there is a little play here. I'd rather this be tight, but fortunately, the other end where I secured this can be loosened and then slide it back until it's tight, and the sled is now nice and snug against those bumpers. Let me tighten it down. And that is our propulsion system ready to test. Let's see how this feels. The lock, when there's a trigger, will be about here. So testing the sled rubber band in three, two, one. That seemed pretty substantial. <laughs> Let's do it again. That was fun. Three, two, one. Yes. Now I don't know if that's enough force to send our uh, little football shaped ordnance downrange. We'll find that out later, but I have a pretty good feeling about this. The next thing I need to do is figure out the trigger so that I can launch it like a normal rocket launcher and not like a slingshot. Our foam got kind of crushed, so I may have to find some rubber to put in there. I loosened the tension on the rubber band so that I can work on this more without fear of this thing flying and taking my fingers off. 
This needs to get pulled back and then locked in place right about here. Uh, and then you'll pull the trigger and that'll send it flying. So I need to come up with some sort of catch to hold it and a trigger to let it go. This is what I'm thinking. Uh, I have a catch, another piece of aluminum that's gonna keep this from sliding forward. This will of course be back there, but it's gonna keep it from sliding forward. And then when you pull the trigger, it'll rotate and once it is free, it should send it forward like, like that, only with much more force. Uh, to keep this from rotating that way so that it holds it in place, I have another piece that I'm gonna screw to the frame right there so it can't rotate backwards. One thing I do need to do is make a bushing for this axle so that it can spin freely. So I think I'll do that now over on the lathe. Here's how this is going together. So I've got an M5 screw and the nut to put it in the rail. Uh, I have some washers and then my little bushing here goes through there. And then this is gonna go that way. Yep, so this goes in there. And then another washer goes on there. This way I can tighten this whole assembly and this part will still swing freely, which is exactly what we want. I can go together like that, and then this will go in the rail. What's cool about this, of course, is that I can adjust the position if necessary. But for now, we're gonna try it right here. To prevent the catch from going backwards, I made another plate here, and it sticks out a little bit on this side so that that'll stop it. And again, I can just screw it right down to these handy dandy rails. Perfect. The way this should work is this comes back, and then this, locks it and it can't go forward at all. And then when we pull the trigger, it'll do something like this. <laughs> That's awesome. That wasn't even at full tension either. That's with this thing totally loose. Now that this catch is pretty much sorted and working the way it ought to, I wanna put a safety feature in here. Um, this is a locking pin that I want to put through the rails so that they will be in front of this pair of screws and it'll stop it from going forward. So that when this is in the primed position, we can throw this in there for safety if um, we're not gonna fire it right away. Now I just need to drill a hole for this in there. That's gonna be easier said than done because there's this rail's a weird shape. So I'm gonna chew that out with a rotary tool first and then I can go to the drill press, poke a hole through it. Now I can install my safety pin down here. It goes right through blocking both of those rails so that when this thing is primed like that, I can lock that. So now even if I pull the trigger, I shouldn't put my hand in the way, but even if I pull the trigger, it can't actually fire. So we are totally safe now. Now that our propulsion system is set, it's time for our trigger system. This is a sketch from Fusion that I was able to just print right out. It's gonna go in here. I've got an axle for it and everything that'll go through there. Uh, my handle's gonna be here, pew. So this, I'm gonna cut out of a piece of aluminum. This is a little thicker than the stuff we've been using. It's a quarter inch, uh, should make this a little more robust. I'm gonna center punch my hole and I'm gonna drill this hole before I cut everything out uh, that way. I can actually clamp this piece in a vise for this drilling safely. Here's my trigger and I'm ready to install it in there. And I planned for all of this to work with this aluminum rod as the axle so it can fit right through the 3D print and through my trigger and then it can't go any further. So I need to trim this a little bit shorter. I can trim it right here. 
Got my plastic jaws here with magnets in them so that they can stay right in place to hold my round bar stock. And then to cut it, I'll just use a hacksaw. I cleaned up the end of this over on the lathe and now we can install it. Whoop. To hold that in place, I'm going to put a washer over it and thread this uh, M4 screw in there. So I'll just tap this uh, 3D printed hole real quick. And then this should thread right in just like so. This way, if I ever need to take this out, I can unscrew that. It's not permanent. And now this pivots just the way we want it. Got my trigger all sorted here, and I just need to figure out how to connect it to our catch so I can fire it. And what I'm thinking for that is cable. I've already got some cable. If I had a bike cable, I'd probably try and use that, but I don't. So I have to come up with a way to connect this to my trigger, and I'm thinking some sort of loop. They do make connectors for these type of cables. I don't have any, so I'm going with my own solution. This is just a bolt with a nut on it and a couple of washers to sandwich our cable between. I do want to leave a little bit of a gap so that, of course, I can loop that onto something. But I should be able to just tighten this really tight, super duper tight. Somehow, I don't have wrenches this size. I don't know how I managed to do that. I have every other size except for this. Going old school with some vice grips. Now that feels really secure and that should hold our weight. In fact, I should check. All good, nice and strong. Now I need to uh, drill and tap a hole on my trigger so I can attach this. This loop can now be attached with a screw. I was gonna put this washer around there, but it actually intersects where the axle has to go, so. Just using the screw, that should hold that in place if I get it nice and tight. Now when this rotates, it should pull the cable with it. Next step is to thread this cable down there. I came up with something to hold the cable, because I have to direct it. Remember, we're gonna have something there. I have to direct it around that, so using more aluminum and more of these guys. This will get bolted down later. And then to, it'll go take a little bit of a detour over to here where I have another one of these like that. Now that those are on the cable, I can install my trigger and make sure it still rotates with all that stuff on there like that. That still wants to move. So that can get locked down. And this one's gonna be over here. This is getting attached to the catch. I've tightened the end off here, uh, but I'm also going to install a spring to go between these two so that this has a way to return to its original position. I have a lock nut for the other side so that it stays very secure. Excellent. The spring's getting attached on the other side with a washer and everything. Good. Now when I pull the trigger, this should go. Oh, not quite. Oh, up oh, there it is, yay. Obviously some kinks to work out, but that's pretty close. Off camera, I did a little bit of tinkering here and changed how the spring works. I made this plate that locks right in there. And what's cool is I can loosen this and tighten it if I need more tension here. But I think we're pretty good. It returns the catch really well. And if there's pressure on here, it'll go sliding forward. And then when you let go, it slots right back where it needs to go. The trigger seems like it's working great. Next is the delivery, how we're gonna send our uh, little nuke towards our enemies. Uh, this slides great. Our bumpers work awesome. We put rubber on there instead of foam so it's not gonna get all mashed up. Problem is, if this gets pushed over there and hits the bumper, it's just gonna topple end over end. So we need a way to raise this up a little bit so that it clears those as we go and I have a plan. I made some more sheets of aluminum, some plates, and I'm gonna use more of these things, which keep coming in handy, to hold them up at 90 degrees, just like that. So I have two of these that are gonna act as rails, and they are slightly tapered upward, about like that, and our little nuke will fit on there so that when it hits those bumpers, when the sled hits the bumpers, this will fly forward. 
that's the plan anyway. Hopefully it works. Uh, I drilled and tapped some holes into this plate so that I can screw these down. And that can go through there. Okay. I can just kind of get everything centered the way I want it and then tighten everything down. Nice and tight. Nice and snug. Mm. That's gonna go right there and it should slide off, no problem. Uh, and then to push it along its way, I made another um, sort of just panel. And just like the other things, it's gonna get screwed down. There we go. Now, this will rest in there. And when the sled goes forward, this will push it. And then when it hits the stop, this should sail right out of there. And the good news is we can give that a shot right now. First test firing of the nuke launcher in three, two, one. <laughs> it didn't go very far, but it did fly straight. <laughs> Which is awesome. <laughs> I think uh, if we had to, we could maybe double up the rubber bands to get a little more oomph out of it, but so far, it's so good. <laughs> and I didn't get hurt. One of the things we were worried about was that when we fired this, it would want to tumble or uh, go the other way, tumble in some sort of way. Um, but it's not, it's actually sailing fairly true. The only thing we need to do now is potentially make it shoot further. Uh, but otherwise, I am over the moon with how well it performed. Let's do that again. <laughs> it doesn't get old. <laughs> Yay! We've got our launcher firing really well. Uh, I did go in and make a couple of small changes because we wanted to see if we can get it to go a little bit further. So I did double up the um, tubing. So I have two tubes here stacked up and that does seem to give it a little more zing. We also changed this top part here where it connects the, to the slide is on the top and it's uh, horizontal, not vertical. That seems to keep the rubber bands wanting to go straight before they were kind of pulling to the side and that seem to have slowed things down a little bit. So we changed that. Uh, I also added these fender washers here to guide our two rubber bands uh, onto this part here that I turned on the lathe, just so it's got a nice pivot for the rubber band to roll around. That all just seems to get everything running better uh, and more consistently so that it fires every time that we pull the trigger. Um, that is, I think, all of the functionality uh, that we're gonna add on this thing. The next thing is to make it look like the mini nuke launcher, the Fat Man. The first piece will be the handle. Uh, provides a little bit of structure, of course, because we'll need to grab it, but it also looks like the one off the Fat Man. This is 3D printed in ABS, just like this part here. Uh, oh, there's also supposed to be a foregrip. Printer, uh, you got that foregrip ready? Perfect, so that'll just go right in there. Uh, these are both gonna get sanded first before I glue them in because it's much easier to do it now before they're attached. Both these pieces got sanded down to 220 grit. We're ready to move on. And before they get installed, I need to support them a little bit more. I modeled in these holes to accept a uh, threaded rod. So that'll get glued in there. I'm just gonna use super glue to secure it before it goes in there. Uh, this way, um, the 3D print, which was printed in layers like this, could be prone to snapping at those layers and this should help that not happen when I'm running around trying to fire at that stuff. Uh, so anyway, got some super glue here. I'll put a little in there and I can take that threaded rod, drop it down in there, put a little bit more around the top. Then I've got some accelerant I can hit that with to make sure that it sets up nicely. So that's now secured in there. I'll do the same thing on this guy and then we can get everything installed. Boop. Mix up some five minute epoxy here and I'm just gonna brush it in the cavity that I modeled on this part and in we go. That's it, nice and snug. The other handle, <laughs> the other handle goes that way. <laughs> Want to make sure that I don't do that by accident and install it backwards. Goes that way. So again, just brush in some epoxy. I want to make sure I don't get any of this epoxy on the trigger mechanism, which I can see right now. And that should just go in like that. That's it. And as the name would suggest, we wait five minutes. Probably gonna wait longer. There we go, our handles are all glued in. 
and fully cured and they feel really sturdy. So I'm confident we can move forward. Uh, and what we have to do next is some additional cosmetic stuff. My thought is I'm gonna make a bunch of panels for the side of the launcher out of this foamed PVC plastic. You could use any kind of plastic. I just happen to have a lot of this. It's kind of flexible, but it's more rigid than the EVA foam we're gonna use later. And I'm going to drill some holes in it, uh, much like we did with all of our aluminum panels to attach it to our rails, just like this. Uh, it's gonna get screwed in like we did before with the same hardware. And basically we're gonna put a bunch of these panels on the uh, frame here so that we can then glue EVA foam to this to start building up the look of this thing. This panel is gonna go in where I already have some nuts set up, uh, making this super easy. I just remove those screws and then added my plate here and then I can just screw these right in. So that's attached. Uh, now these plastic pieces will get glued together, but I can still unscrew them and take the whole assembly apart. This one's already set up. I put my nuts in there and I can just screw that down too. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Brilliant. Now I've got this arrangement on the back here, but it is a little floppy. I wanna glue these together. I've pre-sanded those areas, so they'll take glue really well. And then to clamp them, I'm just gonna use rubber bands to hold everything together like that. And then for glue, I'm going with hot glue, which is fantastic, because today's sponsor is Surebonder. And they sent us a bunch of really amazing glue tools and glue sticks, and I'm gonna use them on this here. Surebonder is a family-owned business. They started back in 1968. They sell hot glue guns and staple guns and rivet tools and a whole bunch more. I'm a big fan because hot glue is so useful in the prop making shop. It's great on this PVC plastic and it's really great on EVA foam. Surebonder has a bunch of different hot glue guns. This one is the Ultra Series. It's dual temperature, so you can use high or low temp hot glue. You got a little switch here to change between the two of them. It has a safety fuse. It's got these side fins here so you can lay it down and it'll keep it off of your work surface. And probably my favorite feature is an auto shut off. If you leave this for 30 minutes without using it, it'll turn itself off. I don't know about you, but I have definitely accidentally left the hot glue gun plugged in overnight and that's definitely not safe. So that auto shut off feature is amazing. Surebonder also carries a bunch of different hot glue sticks, which is very exciting. Today we are using this construction grade hot glue that cools quicker than uh, most normal hot glue, which is great because I like to work fast. And these glue sticks are manufactured right here in the United States. Another really killer feature are the specialty nozzles. I swapped out the default one for this thinner one so I can get into details. Also, Surebonder has a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Surebonder, where you can go learn more about projects working with their products. And you can get all of these wonderful tools over at surebonder.com. If you're gonna go order stuff from their website, we've got a discount code for you that's props20. And that's just for sales on their website, but you can find these products out in the wild at retail stores. Thank you very much to Surebonder for sponsoring this video and sending us these wonderful tools. We're gonna use these a bunch for the rest of the project, so keep an eye out. Our hot glue has cooled, and this is now super duper sturdy. If I wanted to, I could unscrew this and take this off if I have to, uh, but now we have a base for all of our EVA foam. I'm gonna make some more panels like this out of my uh, PVC foam here and kind of skin the whole thing. Mmm, very good. Got my panels attached. I even capped off the end of it there. The next thing is gonna be to add some cosmetic stuff. Uh, if you were building this without a firing mechanism, you could basically like start here with maybe a two by four, but uh, I've made it this far and everything still works. To make it look like it's from the game, I'm going off of this in-game reference I'm gonna kind of eyeball it. I could draw a large blueprint, I usually do that. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna skip that stuff and just start gluing foam on here and bulking out most of these forms. There's probably a lot of design considerations I need to change to make this work around this mechanical thing. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and fly by the seat of my pants. First thing I need to do is cut up some foam. These strips of foam here are gonna cover everything up. Before I glue them down though, just to give myself some options, I'm gonna press the foam down 
so that the screw head makes an impression right there. Uh, I'm going to do that on all of them so that I can poke a hole through it and access those screws. If I ever need to unscrew them, I can. So with those impressions made, got that little dimple there and I have my hole punch just like that. That little thing can get popped out. And then when I have this glued on in the right place, I can go in and still access that screw. I'll do that all the way down. Then I do want to make a little room for the screw head itself, so I can use my rotary tool and just dish out a little spot there so that this is nice and flush right there before I glue it down. The last thing to tackle is this area. Some of this stuff is proud, so I need to remove a little bit of foam from the back. The foam is going to get locked down with hot glue and I put a wider nozzle on here to get a, a wider, flatter amount of hot glue out. Uh, I don't want to get any glue on those screws because I need to potentially unscrew them at some point. Let's get that on there. It's nice the hot glue gives me a little bit of time to position everything before I'm totally committed. Pretty happy with how that's turning out and I have a bunch more foam. So I'm going to tack everything down, get it all set up, and then after that it's just a bunch of old fashioned foam smithing. I'll keep adding foam until it starts to look a lot more like the fat man.
think this is the very last bit of foam fabrication on this build. Excellent. This is looking so cool. It's just about there. Um, a couple more things to add, but for the most part, the foam fabrication is done. And most of this was made out of this EVA foam. Uh, I did use a couple of different materials. Uh, this is an EVA foam uh, dowel. We got a bunch of those all over for our tubes. Um, these lower handle grippy part, those are uh, Sintra plastic. They were very easy to heat bend. And then this cage part, I built most of that out of eighth inch thick styrene plastic, which is a lot more rigid than the EVA foam. So it's keeping this structurally sound. It's all coming together really well. There are a couple more pieces that I'll need to add in a little bit. The new launcher has this pressure gauge here and I actually have an almost perfect replica. This is off of an old air compressor and I took it apart so that we can replace the uh, graphics in here. So Brittany printed these out. I'll install those. This whole thing is gonna get added onto the launcher after we've started painting it. There's also a knob that goes on the back of the Fat Man, but that's something I could probably just 3D print. Look at that, already sanded. The rest of the details are all like nuts and bolts. So I've got these molds here, screw heads and uh, nuts. Some smaller ones I made here, these are just silicone molds. I'm gonna try casting these out of hot glue. So I've got a hot plate going here and I'm just cutting a bunch of these into a little ladle so I can melt them and then pour the liquid into there. And then once it cools, I can pop it out. That's the plan anyway. Since we're painting everything metallic, we have these black glue sticks to be the sort of base color. Should help us out a little bit more compared to the clear ones. Our goo is almost ready. It's getting really runny. I'm gonna use the heat gun to warm up our molds a little bit. That should help the uh, hot glue stay warm while it's going down into all the detail in my molds and hopefully avoid getting air bubbles. Here we go. We threw these in the fridge for about 10 minutes to cool down and let's see how they look. Hey, that's pretty good. Not perfect, but our fat man's supposed to look all old and rusty, so this is pretty great. Here's one of our hot glue nuts, and I'm gonna attach it, of course, with more hot glue. And this is a really great option if you don't have any like urethane resin to cast something and you wanna make it convention safe and not use a real metal bolt, you totally cast it out of hot glue and it'll be nice and safe. And it's really quick, cheap, and easy to make castings like this. Here's one of the small guys. Of course, you do wanna be very careful when you're trying to cast big pieces of hot glue. You can see I, I got a tiny little burn there. It's easy to accidentally get this stuff on you like napalm and it burns you the whole time. So it's a good option, just be careful. I made a base stand for this. Now that's a lot more wieldy. I can get around it and work on it. And the next step I wanna do is sealing it. Uh, we already went over this whole thing with a heat gun to sort of heat seal everything, get rid of all the fuzzies on our foam. But then to give ourselves a nice sort of platform for all of our paint, I'm gonna do a couple good coats of Mod Podge, just a PVA glue. It's gonna go over everything. I can add a little texture if I want. It's also gonna give us a nice smooth finish for us to apply our paints. That'll be a primer, and then we'll start painting all of our base colors.
We have made a ton of progress on this fella. Did lots of painting of all the base colors. We got a sticker right there on our tank. Looks super legit. Even attached some of the remaining parts like the uh, gauge on one side and there's a knob down on the bottom. Everything is attached and we got all the base colors down. I really like this sort of mottled metallic look we got by mixing a couple of different uh, metallic finishes together and then applying the darker one kind of mottled. So it's got that rustic metallic finish on there. Uh, but to make it even more rustic, we're going to rust it. We're going we're gonna to put rust paint on there. Uh, and that's going to be one of the last steps to make this thing look super, super legit. This is a metallic finish here. It's got actual iron powder in it. And we're going to put that on our nuke launcher with this crummy looking brush. And then we're going to spray it with this oxidizer and that will make real rust. I'm adding this just in areas where I think it would be rusty. And it's just a gray color. It's kind of actually hard to see, but it'll look really cool once we let it actually rust. So I'll do a whole area like this and then I'll spray it. And I have two different oxidizers. One's a Tiffany green. It's meant for like copper to make it turn green. But on this iron coating, it makes it look all ruddy red, which is really cool. And then there's also a brown, like a tan. And that makes the rust turn a lot more orangey, a lot more of that like tan rust. And I'm going to use both of those because they, uh, they complement one another and it adds a lot of contrast, which is really nice. Uh, I'm adding this stuff now and I want to spray it with that oxidizer before it dries because uh, once it dries, the oxidizer can't get in there. So I got my oxidizer here and I can just sort of hose down the whole surface. This is all going to get very messy. We put a bunch of paper down to collect all the drippings. Uh, but basically, I'm going to just work on one area like that and then let it rust while I move on to the next thing. And I can do a couple layers of this until I'm happy with how rusty it is. I added this uh, ruddy red rust to lots of different spots all over. You can see it's starting to oxidize and turn that nice dark red. Uh, now I want to go in with more of this paint here. This is the same iron paint and I'm just going to selectively add spots where I want a more yellow orangish color. I've got a different oxidizer for that. So same exact process except I'm being a little more selective about where it goes. Picking spots where I think there should be a little bit of a different color. Kind of mix it up a little bit. How cool does this look? It's so legit. Uh, it's also real rust, so I'm going to coat it with um, this is just a matte finish here, a clear finish, so that I can protect that finish, but also so I don't get um, any rust on my hands. Look at it. It's so rusty. It looks so good. <laughs> it's harder to get a more legitimate rust finish than with this particular process. Uh, there is one more thing we need to do though. This needs to be dirtied up a little bit more. I grabbed my water mixable oil paints here to do some weathering. I just want to darken all the crevices as if after having been rusted, it then got more dirty. Uh, so I'm just going to use these guys to just get in the crevices a bit. Just got black and brown here and I'll mix those together with a little bit of water. It is an oil paint, but it can be mixed with water. So I can thin it a little bit, which will help me get this down into all the details that I want. I'm just going to cover everything. Low spots like this where dust is dirt is going to accumulate. Clean a lot of it away. But I'm going to leave a bunch so that it looks all dirty. Same thing with any of the other details. These lower details like that are going to catch a lot of dirt and grime in there. I can even take a really thin bit of uh, this oil paint here and add like a little dribble as if let's say some liquid has accumulated there and kind of dripped down a little bit. Uh, and if that's too much, I can just tamp it a little bit with my paper towel, break it up a little bit. I'm kind of liking how that looks. So I'm going to do all of this over the entire launcher. As I'm wrapping this up here, I'd like to take a moment to thank Surebonder again for sponsoring this video. They've been fantastic. The glue guns we use were instrumental in making this project come together. Quite literally, it's holding it all together. We've got a code for you to use over at Surebonder.com that's PROPS20 and you can get a discount for a limited time. 
Thanks, Sir Bonder, for making this project possible. I would, of course, also love to thank the members of our Extra Credit Club. Their direct support helps make these videos possible. And you can jump in too. We've got a link down in the description. If you uh, jump in at any level, then you'll get access to behind the scenes vlogs here in the shop. We do a build discussion video every week for whatever project we're working on. And you can get early access to all of our build videos, including this one. So thanks. Thanks for all the support. You guys are awesome. Oh, it looks so good. It looks all like corroded and, and kind of gross here and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> it looks awesome. You know, something to think about, this prop isn't exactly convention safe because it's got a firing mechanism. If I was gonna bring this to a convention, I would first read the rules of that convention, what the rules on their props and weapons are. Uh, but also, I would take the rubber band completely out of this, just disable the firing me mechanism completely, which I could do, I can unscrew that. Um, that way I could bring it to a convention, I could get it checked out, they could confirm it cannot fire anything and it should be okay. Remember, safety first. And of course, if you wanna see more of these prop making videos, you'll wanna hit the subscribe button and hit the bell because we're planning even more epic builds just like this. And when they come out, you don't wanna miss it. It's gonna be really, really fun. We have some pretty ridiculous projects lined up and I can't wait to share them with you. Oh, look how dirty that looks now. It's great. I think this might be the last bit, the very last little touch of weathering and our nuke launcher is all done. It's been quite a journey. I can't wait to see how this thing performs. Printer, I need that foregrip. Well, we know what our blooper reel is gonna be. I put together two of these rail, bleh, bleep. <laughs> that would be wrong. X-Force. Come on, fingers. <laughs> I've got my trigger, <laughs> I forgot what it's called. Print it out on the 3D printer. Oh. Oh, you hit the microphone. <laughs> Where'd it go? Got my spritz bottle and I'll just spray it. 
Ah, it worked okay. <laughs> so close.